Bonjour et bienvenue. I'm not gonna do this vlog in French, you know. Don't worry, I will speak English. But I have prepared. We got some wine right here, and here we have a baguette, you know. So, for me, it feels like we're in France, you know what I'm saying? But we're not, we're in Sweden. Uh, let me get this. Listen, I gotta admit something. This is frozen deep, all right? So I can't eat this right now. Okay, welcome back to my vlog. This is Jay Vlog. And as you can see, we're gonna talk tennis again. Today, we're gonna hear my viewpoints and my take on the 2019 French Open, or if you wanna call it Roland Garros, in tennis. It's one of the four Grand Slams that's being played every year. And as you may well know, it's played on the surface that is called clay. And in Swedish, clay means grus. You know what? Every time I hear the word clay, I always think about Cassius Clay. I am the greatest. Who changed his name to Muhammad Ali. But enough about that. Let's get on with the show. And to get into the uh, French mood, not only do I have this uh, wine and this uh, frozen baguette, I also have this autobiography by fellow Swede, Bjorn Bori, who won the tournament six times. That's right. Impressive. I want to start off by giving a big congratulations to the women's champion, which was Ashley Barty from Australia. How about that? And I also want to give a big congratulations to the men's champion who was, who else, for the 12th time, Rafael Nadal from Spain. Who else? All right. First, some words about this year's Roland Garros, or French Open. This year, they had some new things. First of all, their center court, which is called Philippe Chatrier, has gone, undergone a big makeover. Uh, they have upgraded it. Actually, they tore the whole thing down to the ground and built it up from scratch, and they did it in a year. Uh, it's much bigger, and it's more functional I would say it needed to be upgraded so it had to happen someday and one of the reasons is that they are planning as you may well know to build a roof over the center court the French Open is the only Grand Slam tournament of the four that does not have a roof so when the rain comes no one can play at any courts of course so they had to uh, upgrade the center court but of course there's always a negative thing when that stuff happens because uh, Philippe Chatrier was considered by many to be the most beautiful of all the four center courts on the four Grand Slams uh, so it's uh, newer now uh, but the charm the old charm is of course not there anymore, but maybe it can get charming in the future, who knows. And they also added a brand new extra court. If you want to sum up this tournament real fast, you can say that on the women's side, you can sum it up with one word, upsets. And on the men's side, you can sum it up with two words, no upsets. But we're not going to go that easy. I'm going to explain it a little bit further and we're going to start off with the latest because as Queen Latifah once said Alright, the women 
I want to give a big congratulations once again to Ashley Barty, 23 years old from Australia. Okay, the fact that she won, it wasn't perhaps a huge upset, but I don't think there were too many experts or people who would have picked her to win before the tournament. But boy, did she win, all right. She not only won, she played fantastic. I mean, this woman is really good, all right. She can play. She's complete, okay. I would say, almost. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you watch her play, you kind of want to compare her and call her a female Roger Federer. Actually, sometimes. That's the truth. Because she's very complete. And uh, she's very mature. And she's very intelligent. Uh, she plays great all over the court. She makes the right decisions. She knows what she's doing. And her signature shot is her backhand slides. It's a thing of beauty, really. And uh, the funny thing about her, she was a great doubles player a couple of years ago. Uh, but actually, she stopped playing tennis when she was 18 and started playing cricket for a couple of years. How cool is that? And she's also a great golfer, by the way. But she picked up tennis again which was, uh, well, lucky for us. Now, Ashley Barty, she can actually go places, if you know what I mean. Uh, she, now she's ranked number two, but uh, listen, it's going to be exciting to watch her play during the uh, grass season that's coming up now, because I think she's good at all the surfaces. And she's only 23. So I think the future, future is her. Um, how would you, in your best words, describe a party party? <laughs> um, well, for I mean, a lot of the Aussies out there, we, um, I think for us it's a, it's a celebration of um, not just these two weeks, but the last two or three years for myself and my team. I have an extraordinary group of genuine, authentic people around me, and um, this is just a byproduct of what we've been able to, to do, all the work that we've done, uh, and it's just, it's incredible. I'm a little bit speechless. We had two very young ladies who went very far in this tournament, and one of them reached the final and was beaten by Barty. And she did not have a party after she was beaten by Barty. And her name is Marketa Vondrosova, only 19 years old, from the Czech Republic. What is it about the Czech Republic and female tennis players? I don't know. But this popping up one every second, it seems like. And, and often they are left-handed. What's up with that? What up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? And in the semifinals, Barty beat another teenager. And her name is Amanda Anisimova from the United States of America. And she was only 17 years old. Okay? Look, look out for those two girls in the future. And guess who Anisimova beat in the quarterfinals? She beat Simona Halep, the champion from last year, from Romania. And that, my friend, was a big, big upset because a lot of people thought that Halep would win this year also. But she didn't. That was a big surprise. Sloane Stevens from the United States. She lost to Johanna Conta from Great Britain in the quarterfinals. That was a surprise, too. But there's two more surprises I want to talk about. One is regarding Naomi Osaka. What happened to her? The Japanese sensation, as you know, won the last two Grand Slams. And many people thought that, well, maybe she can win this one too, and then another one. Who knows? The strange thing with her was that she split with her coach after she won the two Grand Slams. And he took her from here on the ranking up to number one in just a couple of months. 
it was incredible and so surprising that they split up for a lot of fans so many people were thinking how is she how is she gonna do here how is she gonna perform in this French Open man did she struggle or what she barely got out of the first round she lost the first set with six love and then in the second round she barely survived Belarus former world number one Victoria Azarenka in a high profile meeting and then in, already in the third round she lost and she lost against Katarina Siniakova from where else the Czech Republic of course but uh, a very disappointing tournament from Naomi Osaka considering all the expectations the pressure of being world number one got to her in some sort of way she said after the tournament and that was the reason for her lackluster performance at this year's Roland Garros yeah. um, you know it's weird but I think me losing is probably the best thing that could have happened um, I think I was overthinking this like calendar slam for me this is something that I've wanted to do forever but I think I have to think about it like if it was that easy everyone would have done it um, and I just have to keep training hard and put myself in a position again to do it hopefully um, but for now like uh, piecing out of this tournament I'm going home like bye I, I'm sorry I'm not gonna miss you guys <laughs> But the thing with her is the same thing with a lot of tennis plays, actually. The clay surface is not her best surface. Well, if I got a penny for every time I heard an expert say, well, this player and that player's worst surface is clay, I hear it all the time. As a matter of fact, it's only, it feels to me like it's only like a handful of players that uh, had clay as the best surface. On the men's side, it's a couple of players from Spain, you know who they are. And on the women's side, it's like Simona Halep, maybe some other ones, not that many. Tennis players, they don't play that good on clay, it seems like, most of them. And Naomi Osaka was one of them. Also another player, also from the United States, the legend. And Clay is not her best surface as well. The living legend, I should say. What happened to Serena Williams at this Roland Garros? A lot of questions. Her preparations was not that good. She was actually injured for a while prior to this tournament. She was not expected to go that far, but it was very exciting to see just how far she would go. Well, she won two matches, but in the third round, she went down. And she did it against a fellow American, 20-year-old Sophia Kennan, who played the match of her life against Serena. She looked clumsy from time to time. It really looked to me like she was totally out of balance. She didn't have any coordination. Even Serena's coach said afterwards that uh, even if she had won, Serena, she would probably lose in the next round or something like that. Serena, if somebody told you, given the two matches that you had to pull out of in the lead up, that you'd come this far, would you have taken it or are you still very disappointed? Um, I would have thought they were lying because I wouldn't expect to have gotten only to the third round. So I would have been like, that's not true. But hey, I, you know, it is what it is. So the hunt for number 24, tying the Grand Slam record, is continuing for Serena Williams. Serena is now 37 years old and she has not won a single tournament after she gave birth. We'll see what happens in the future. Her older sister Venus is now 39 years old and she lost 
already in the opening round. And she lost to Elena Svitolina from Ukraine. A very high profile first round, I must say. Some more upsets. Both Angelique Kerber from Germany and Caroline Wozniacki from Denmark both lost in the very first round. Hmm. And another upset, Karolina Pichkova from the Czech Republic, who many thought had a good chance to win, lost in the third round to Petra Martic from Croatia, which was a surprise in this tournament. Anastasia Sevastova from Latvia versus Elise Mertens from Belgium. What a match that was. So much technique, so much finesse. Beautiful to watch. And that match was in the third round. Speaking of women's tennis, after Serena Williams got her baby, there hasn't been like one female player that has really like stepped up and show that she is the supreme player that's going to dominate in the, la in the next forthcoming years. Uh, so it's a little exciting to see. Uh, often we have new champions every time there's a Grand Slam for the most part. Uh, there isn't like a big four or big three like there are in the men's, on the men's side. So a lot of ups and downs among the women. And uh, on the one side it's exciting that we have new champions very often. But uh, the popularity of the uh, women's game uh, may be suffering a little bit from having like uh, a couple of big ones, you know. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Maybe Barty will become that person, or uh, Naomi Osaka. We'll see what happens. Now the men, woo we. I want to say this. That's right. Twelve, twelve times. As Rafael Nadal from Spain won the French Open, Roland Garros. It's so unbelievable, you can say it multiple times, and it's really hard to understand. No one has come near doing this. Twelve times the same Grand Slam tournament. That is simply amazing. And considering this day and age, with the competition is so fierce. Rafael Nadal is undoubtedly not just the greatest clay court player of all time, that's a no-brainer, but he is definitely the second best player of all time period. And uh, Roger Federer is of course number one and Novak Djokovic is number three. Most experts before the tournament, when they picked the four players that they thought was going to go to the semi-finals, uh, most picked Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, of course, uh, from Serbia, world number one, uh, who has won the three latest Grand Slam. Uh, Dominic Thiem from Austria, who is a clay court specialist has never won a Grand Slam, but he reached the final last year in the French Open. And the comebacking, Roger Federer from Switzerland, the GOAT, greatest of all time. And I'm going to speak more about his comeback in this tournament soon. But most experts picked those four and they were right. So there was no like real upsets on the men's side. Uh, but Nadal won the title again and he has now 18 Grand Slams overall and Roger Federer as you know has 20 so he's creeping up on him 
And the final was a rematch of last year's final between Nadal and clay court specialist also and Young Gun, still in my opinion, Dominic Team from Austria. Uh, he lost to Nadal last year, three sets to love. But this year, many people thought he was going to give Nadal a real run for his money. Because team has developed a lot since last year. He is, he is basically the only one who has beaten Nadal on clay in several tour tournaments. So, there was a lot of excitement about this final. And team started real really good Nadal did win the first set but team won the second set so one all in set then Nadal went on a toilet break for about 10 minutes and when he came back team didn't have that much to uh, challenge Nadal after that and uh, I don't know if that toilet break uh, if that was the reason, but um, after that it was not, well, we can say it like this, Nadal was in control after that. So he won three, one in sets. And this is historical. A dozen victories. And uh, Nadal, of course, we all know his game. Uh, we know his strong sides. Uh, that vicious forehand that has so much spin on it but I must say uh, and was evident in this tournament his two-handed backhand is also very very good it's really good you know so credit to that also uh, Dominic team his girlfriend from France won the uh, women's doubles the same day as the men's final but uh, so so they could have ha had a double celebration but that turned out not to be the case one of the reason many people thought team had a chance is because he beat Novak Djokovic in the semi-finals which was a great feat because Djokovic has looked so devastating in the last three Grand Slams and he was looking to win his fourth uh, which didn't happen he was bothered by the wind in the semi-final there was heavy wind in both semi-finals more than usual you can't be frustrated all the time because the the neighbor has a bigger house than you or, or a bigger tv or you know or better garden that's that's not that's not the way that i see the life you know and i i just try to to do my way i, I feel very lucky about all the things that are happening to me and if at the end of my career i, I am able to win a couple of more grand slams and be closer to roger will be unbelievable if not for me, still unbelievable. And actually, the team produced the greatest point, uh, in many opinions, uh, in the whole tournament. He played Gael Monfils from France in the fourth round. And look what he did. Amazing shot. But a little talk about the other semifinal, which Nadal won against none other than Roger Federer. And that was the big story, I think, on the men's side. Federer's comeback to Roland Garros, the first time in four years that one could see Federer in Paris playing this tournament. It was a great comeback, a great return for the fans uh, who love Federer. And Federer actually liked this or loved this tournament. But he hasn't played the last three years. Uh, there was a lot of speculations why Federer decided to come back after not playing here for three years. This is, of course, his worst surface. 
he has only won here once and that was like 10 years ago and the only reason was because Nadal lost to Robin Serdelin already in the fourth round which was still a shocker when you think about it and uh, but he came back and he won easily his four first matches and then he had a great quarterfinals against fellow Swiss uh, Stan Wawrinka and uh, but unfortunately for him and his fans he lost to Nadal in the semifinals so now there's a big talk about is he ever ever gonna return to Roland Garros uh, I would say probably not but Federer has left the door open so who knows he might or he may not but it's not so fun it's not so much fun for Federer to lose so badly against Nadal because he knows that he will sooner or later face up to Nadal in this tournament. So he figures if he doesn't have a chance against him, why bother, perhaps. But things can happen. Nadal can maybe get injured or something. Or someday he will lose, of course, Nadal, even for Roland Garros. So. We'll see what happens next year. The Nadal Federer semifinal was clearly the most anticipated match of the whole tournament. As is always the case with those two, they make up the most popular rivalry in tennis, without a doubt. They are the two most loved tennis players in the world, by far. But the match in itself was almost destroyed by the extreme wind. Personally, I have never seen a win like this in a big, high-profile tennis match like this one. It was almost unplayable. The wind was so strong, it was almost like a storm sometimes. But Nadal handled it the best. And speaking of Avrinka, the best match that was played, I would say, in the whole tournament was Pavrinka against Stefanos Tsitsipas from Greece, uh, who won so many hearts uh, in the last Australian Open. He's a young guy, the next generation, and uh, many people think big things about him. And they played over five hours in a great match with a lot of great rallies that was in the fourth round it was nice to see Vavrinka go so far in this tournament because he has problems with his knee he has had surgery so it felt like a little bit like the good old times that he find his form again so that was a happy thing So all in all, like I said, no big upsets on the men's side. We had a Swedish player, Mikkel Imer, who went to the second round, but lost to another favorite, Sasha Swerve from uh, Germany. People thought that maybe this was his real breakout Grand Slam tournament, but uh, he lost to Djokovic in the fourth round. Were there any controversies? I wouldn't say so. Perhaps this press conference, which was pretty special, um, there's like a line where you have to wait all the players uh, to talk to the press. And uh, apparently Serena Williams was in a hurry and uh, she couldn't wait for uh, Dominic Team to get finished. So they had to move Team to a smaller room so that Serena could have been, could proceed with her interview. When Dominic team find out uh, what happened, he got really mad, he got pissed off, and he left. And then I must talk about my guy, Nick Curios from Australia, who didn't even show up! He didn't even play, because he don't like clay. That's a rhyme, actually. 
I should have that in my rack. Man, he's a special guy. Nut. So, I would like to thank y'all for listening to me, giving my take on this tournament that has so much history. And I'll see you next time because soon there is Wimbledon. And boy, that tournament has a lot of history. Peace out. Nej, jag har haft glasögon på mig hela tiden. Ah.